Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Emeria, the Sky Ruin for Modern. So welcome to another Modern Monday, where we go over a modern deck tech uh, that I think is really fun, uh, and you guys might like too. But of course, before we get into it, make sure to like the video if you like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps us know you care, and helps us grow the channel. But without further ado, let's get right into the deck tech. So game one game plan is basically using Emiria the Sky Ruin here, which is Emiria the Sky Ruin enters the battlefield tapped. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control seven or more planes, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You can also add one white mana to your mana pool. The entire deck is about making a lot of uh, threats go to the graveyard and then come back from the graveyard and be another threat again against our opponent. So basically if they have a lot of removal against us, we still have a way to bring back cards from our graveyard back to the battlefield. Not to mention some other spicy cards that are actually in the deck list that have a lot of fantastic results for us uh, that are very expensive that we actually don't want to be playing, but we want to be playing from the graveyard. But a card here that's great overall for us is this right here. We have four Sun Titan, a six mana six six giant with vigilance, and whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So there are a lot of other creatures in this deck that are three mana and less uh, that have the ability to be tapped by Sun Titan here. Sun Titan is a fantastic way for us to kind of gain advantage uh, throughout the mid to late game so we can get our board site either large enough to uh, overwhelm our opponent or get a lot of uh, great value creatures on the battlefield in order to uh, kind of overwhelm our opponent via utility. Moving on from Sun Titan though, we have two Jin Gitaxis Core Augur. This is a nine or ten mana actually, uh, five four, legendary creature Praetor. This is one of the cards we want to go to the graveyard first uh, that we want to bring back with Maria. This has flash at the beginning of your end step, but draw seven cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. So basically uh, making our opponent have no cards in their hand and having us draw seven new cards at, the, at our end step. So a fantastic way to kind of like hopefully end a match for us. This is going to be the card that uh, gives us the ultimate amount of value before we end the match basically. This is going to be a card that helps us draw into removal, helps us draw into some creatures uh, to play out, all that kind of stuff. But of course, it's only a two of here because it's one of those cards where it can be a total glass cannon uh, if it does work. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it just, it's all right. It's fine. The deck can, can survive without it. Moving on from this right here, we have a uh, Squadron Hawk here, four of here. This is a two mana, one, one bird flying. And when Squadron Hawk is on the battlefield, you may search your library for up to three cards named Squadron Hawk, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is going to do two different things for us. This is going to A, makes it so that our board site has more Squadron Hawks coming out in the following turns. And it's going to have uh, B have the ability to thin our deck by three cards, which is very good. And of course, Squadron Hawk can be a uh, target for the Sun Titan we have. While it is just a 1-1 for two, uh, that isn't really what we're really worried about. What we're really worried about here is uh, thinning our deck out and making sure we have blockers for those larger creatures that our opponents are playing out. Moving on here, we have a Wall of Omens. This is a two mana 0-4 defender. And when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. This is another four of here. Uh, this is a great way to shut down an opponent in the early game against uh, like some like more aggressive opponents, uh, especially the red deck wins or Rakdos wins decks. Uh, Wall of Omens is going to be a great way for us to get some card advantage by drawing a card and also having a 0-4 to block a lot of creatures. Again, really just kind of uh, making sure we're in a holding pattern for the first couple turns until we get our actual like, method and our, and our train going uh, with the deck here. Next up for us, for even more card draw, we have three Champion of Wits. Champion of Wits can be a great way for us to uh, draw in two cards as well as pitch cards into our graveyard that we want hitting the graveyard as soon as possible, just like the Jin Gitaxis. Champion of Wits also has the like upside of being able to be reanimated in Eternalized Swarmant as a 4-4 as well. So this is one of those cards where we can do it either both ways, either reanimating it as a 2-1, drawing cards, or reanimating it as a 4-4 later in the match if we have the mana to make a 4-4 uh, you know, and also draw four cards. Either way, Champion of Wits is a great inclusion in this deck. Next up here, we have another card that helps these other cards. This is Flicker Wisp, a 3-mana three 3-1 three elemental flying, and when Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent, return that permanent to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So a great way to get Champion of Wits, Wall of Omens, and even a Squadron Hawk if we need it uh, to kind of go off a second time. Same thing with uh, even a uh, Sun Titan too. We have a lot of Enter the Battlefield abilities going off every single turn, and Flicker Wisp is going to help us kind of keep those kind of going until we get into our Emiria strategy. And one of the reasons we want so much card draw in the actual main board here is because we have four Chasm Skulker. This is a three mana 1-1 one, one Squid Horror that whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. And whenever it dies, create X 1-1 blue squid creature tokens with island walk where X is the number of plus one plus one 
counters on Chasm Skulker. So one, being able to draw a lot of cards means this, this creature is going to be a 2-2, a 3-3, and so on. It's going to be very, very large. And two, we actually have cards in the deck to make sure that it actually dies instead of getting exiled, like with a Path to Exile or something like that. So we know that we actually are creating a lot of uh, squids. This is going to be our win con number two for us, besides playing out Sun Titan and then just swinging out turn over turn. Uh, making a lot of squids and swinging out really wide can end up a game really quickly, uh, or just making a large 7-7 seven, seven, and then swinging for face. Again, we have a lot of value here, and we really want to be pushing it out onto the battlefield. That is it for creatures. We have 24 total in the deck. Let's get over to some uh, spells here. We have four Path to Exile, a one mana instant, Exile Target Creature. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. So again, a fantastic removal spell for us, for our opponent in instant speed. Obviously, if our opponent is in white, they're going to have Path to Exiles as well, so we really do want to watch out for those because we really want a lot of our creatures to die instead of being exiled, so that's the only card I'm kind of worried about in the matchups when, the when we actually stream. But overall, I do think the card does a lot of good work for us. Next up is a newer card. First, we have two chart of course. This is a two mana source. We draw, draw two cards and then discard a card unless you attack with a creature this turn. So again, we draw two cards and we discard one to the graveyard that we want to be bringing back again later in the future. And that's with either Emiria or Sun Titan 2. Again, chart of course is also drawing us cards, so the Chasm Skulker is growing too. Just a lot of uh, great synergies amongst the deck itself. Really love it. Some more spells for us. We have actually three Supreme Verdicts in the uh, main board here. This is a four mana sorcery. Supreme Verdict can't be countered and destroy all creatures. So this here is existing uh, for the Chasm Skulker whenever you want it to die. Since we do have Emiria on the uh, battlefield most of the time turned on, we have the ability to get creatures back from the graveyard to the battlefield. And with the Chasm Skulker, if it does die, it makes a lot of squids for us. So we actually go wide and then bring stuff back at the next upkeep. And of course, it needed to be an Azurius uh, wipe spell because it can't be countered, which is fantastic for us. I love me some board wipe. <laughs> Next up here, we have two search for Ascanta. This is gonna be a great way for us to uh, like filter through our actual deck as quickly as possible. This is a two mana legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into the graveyard. Then if you have seven more cards in your graveyard, you may transform search for Ascanta. Of course, when it flips, it turns into the suck in ruin and you can add one blue mana to your mana pool and pay three and tap it. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non creature card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So basically, we're using Ascanta here to search when it's, once it flips into a uh, either Supreme Verdict, a Detention Sphere, which we're about to talk to in a minute, or a Path to Exile. More often than not, though, we probably don't want Search for Ascanta to flip. We just want to throw things into the graveyard that we can actually get back later in the match. Uh, next card for us is, of course, Detention Sphere, is what I just talked about. A three-mana enchantment. When Detention Sphere enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent not named Detention Sphere and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. When when Intention Series leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this is a very nice board-wide uh, Oblivion Ring for us uh, for a more affinity style deck where they have a lot of the same creature names or a, a deck where they have a lot of tokens that we really don't like dealing with. I really do love Detention Sphere in the main board here for us as it does do a great job at shutting down our opponent if they're trying to do a setup kind of modern deck. But that's it for all the cards in the main board that do things. Let's go over lands real quick. We have four Flooded Strand, of course. Pay one, sack it, and search your library for a Plains or Island card, put it into your battlefield, then of course, you know, shuffle your library. Then we have two Mistville Plains. This is a land that enters the battlefield tapped, and you can pay one white and tap it, put target card in your graveyard on the bottom of your library, play this ability only if you control two or more white permanents. So this is a good way to get some Squadron Hawk value back if a Squadron Hawk does die. Having infinite blockers is kind of amazing. <laughs> Next up here we have just Plains, and that is six Plains and seven Island. And that is the full 60. So game one game plan is to get out Squadron Hawk as quickly as possible, get out Wall of Omens, make sure we can build up our defenses, then get out a uh, Chasm Skulker, build that up, kind of flicker with the Champion Wits there, and then of course get Sun Titan out, and then just start swinging for face. The deck is about building up and then going wide, and then kind of swinging out for the win. But what can we do in game two? What can we do against Storm? What can we do against, you know, Affinity? What can we do in game two? Let's go over the sideboard here. We have one Angel's Grace here, a one mana instant with split second. As long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities, and you can't lose the game this turn, and your opponent can't win the game this turn. Until the end of the turn, damage that will reduce your life total less than one reduces it to one instead. So Angel's Grace is a great way to uh, kind of get around a storm deck that's going to be going off on a single turn. Uh, fantastic for us and hopefully gives us an extra turn to kind of get in for a win there. Um, sometimes it's not really going to help us at all, uh, but it is going to have that that option of, uh, you know, our opponent's going to win either this turn or we're going to win this turn and Angel's Grace is going to help us win the following turn. Next up, we have two Celestial Flare here. This is a double white instant. Target player sacrifices an attacking or blocking creature. This is for any kind of indestructible creature that we can't 
can't really deal with early on in the game with Supreme Verdicts. And the card also has maybe Hexproof or something like that. Basically, this card is here to deal with a Boggles deck, anything with Hexproof, anything with Shroud. Uh, just kind of annoying. Just kind of annoying, actually. Uh, but this card goes around that by choosing the target player, which is awesome for us. Uh, next up here, we have Disenchant, two of here. This is a two-man instant to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Fantastic against Affinity, fantastic against a Boggles deck or an enchantment based deck. Just overall a great card for us. Next up here, we have Mana Leak. This is a two-mana instant counter-target spell unless its controller pays three colorless, and it's a fantastic control card for us. It's not really like the best control card, obviously, but it is a great way in the early to mid game to shut down an opponent that's playing out a lot of cards really effectively. Mental League is especially effective against cards like Affinity, where they're really playing on curve by turn two or three really, really effectively, uh, where they're kind of just dumping their entire hand on the battlefield. Uh, Mental League does help us shut down strategies like that. Next up here, we have two Frexian Revoker, a two mana two one, of course, and as it enters the battlefield, name a non land card. Activate abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated. So this is a great way to shut down a Planeswalker, a great way to shut down a hard to deal with creature, and of course any kind of artifact that we don't like in the Affinity matchup. Next up here we have one Stony Silence. This is just a straight up shutdown for Affinity. Uh, a two mana enchantment. Activated abilities of artifacts can be activated, of course. So super simple and straight to the point. Then we have two Oblivion Ring here. Just a little bit more removal for us. This is a three mana enchantment. When Oblivion Ring enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent. And of course, when Oblivion Ring leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So another card for us to kind of uh, like shut down an opponent that has a lot of uh, either enchantment or artifact hate on the battlefield that's doing us a lot of damage. And the last two cards in the actual sideboard here is Faith's Fetters. This is a four mana enchantment aura, enchant permanent. When Faith Fetters enters the battlefield, you gain four life, and enchant permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So this is really here for the pseudo life gain and the complete shutdown of a creature on their side of the field. While it doesn't completely exile the creature, it does shut them down completely and make sure that they don't use any of their uh, activated abilities unless they're mana abilities, which is great for us. So again, it's just another card that's good against a affinity deck. <laughs> but for me, I think the best part about this card is the passive life gain as well. And that is the full 75 guys on MPGO Traders is coming to about 117 tickets. Not too bad. And in paper, it's coming to about 230. Again, with the modern decks, they're trying to keep it under 300 uh, for the modern stuff. Uh, not too expensive, not too pricey. I like to keep it in that nice Goldilocks zone. But of course, guys, let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have any suggestions for it? Again, I'm still kind of new to modern. So if I'm missing a card that you think might be really good in this particular uh, deck here, please let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.